So it's all about this full process. Um, before you show up, you're going to research and you're going to prepare. And then what are you, how are you going to interact with employers and then what can you do after. So between now and Wednesday at 3 o'clock, what I want you to do is actually log into your Simplicity system. Shaq has a career posting where you can actually see all of the organizations that are going to be attending the career fair. Uh, last I heard, you have about 60 organizations coming, so that's a lot of people that you can talk to. So the best thing to really do is log into this system and look through all of the organizations that are going to be there and identify, I would say, five to ten that are really, really enticing to you. And then what you want to do is research these organizations. So you can find some organizations that look really interesting to you, go on their websites, um, and sort of find out a little bit more than maybe you knew before. I would also say look on LinkedIn, see if you actually know people who know people who work at these organizations. So that when you arrive on Wednesday, you are prepared um, with some questions to actually talk to people who are there. Um, what I would say is you can actually write down some questions about each individual organization. So when you arrive at a career fair on Wednesday, a lot of the time you actually may spend sort of waiting in line to speak with people. And what you may want to do is print out a little cheat sheet for each of the organizations that you are very interested in. And then, you know, even just sort of the about us from each company. And then as you're sort of preparing to talk to the organization, you can kind of look down and say, oh yeah, these are the guys that do X, Y, and Z. I was really interested in this project that they were working on and sort of have some of these questions prepared so that when you walk up to the table, you look like you're somebody who has done your homework, you are really prepared, you're excited, you're enthusiastic, and you're somebody who they can already tell is going to be a hard worker because you've already done sort of that extra work than everyone else who's there and is kind of floating around and doesn't really know what they're talking about. So you're going to be much more successful if you actually have gone onto these websites, figured out the things that particularly interest you about each company, figure out what makes each company unique, rather than just sort of walking up and going, uh, what do you guys do? That's not going to make a great first impression. So make sure that you go on look who's going to be there, and then go into the website and really do your research. Um, and I would say more than just doing your research, make sure that you write things out or print things out so that when you show up on Wednesday, you don't go, oh, you know, that, I read that, but I can't remember if that was this company or if it was that company. So make sure that you're really sort of organized and you have a method to the way you think about uh, the organization. So you definitely want to bring your resume. Now before you bring your resume, I strongly encourage you to get somebody to look at your resume so that when you are going up to the different organizations and handing out your resume, you feel really good about what you're giving them. So you can come to the Wasserman Center and have somebody look at your resume. Um, you may be able to get an appointment with someone between now and Wednesday. Otherwise, we do have walk-in hours. Um, today, we actually have walk-in hours 12.30 to 2, and tomorrow, 12.30 to 2, I don't think evening hours, and Wednesday, we have them 12.30 to 2 as well. So you're welcome to come into the Wasserman Center. We are at 133 East 13th Street, Palladium Building, right above the gym. You can go work out, get somebody to work, look at your resume, and then when you show up on Wednesday, you're feeling really confident about what it is that you are actually bringing with you and handing out to different organizations. Um, make sure that your resume is highlighting the relevant skills. So if you are a real estate finance person, make sure that your finance experience is coming through in your resume. So even if you're a career changer, make sure that you're highlighting that relevant coursework, that you're highlighting anything that's going to be relevant to the organizations that you're talking to. So have a friend look at your resume, have someone at Wasserman, have somebody so that you're feeling really good about it. I would recommend printing your resume on resume paper or bond paper. Uh, you can get, pick this up at Staples. If you don't have time and you only have regular printer paper, that's fine. I don't think it's the end of the world. However, make sure that you're keeping your resumes neat and clean. Yes, 
What do you mean resume paper? If I go ask for that. If you go to Staples and say, do you have resume paper? They'll have it. They have, yeah. You know, what's the real name for it? You know? Bond paper. Bond. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. It's just slightly, slightly thicker paper rather than regular printer paper. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It just makes it look a little bit more professional, a little bit nicer. Um, if you only have regular paper, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just make sure that you're keeping your resume neat and clean. Put it in a clean folder or a portfolio. Um, the worst thing that you could do with a resume is walk up to a table and say, here's my nice mushed up resume. That's not going to give a good first impression. So make sure that you're keeping it clean. You know, you don't have coffee stains on it. It's not folded. It's not crumpled up. It looks very neat and professional. Um, I recommend bringing multiple copies. You don't necessarily need to bring 60 copies with you. You're not going to be working the room and sort of handing out your resume. I know a lot of people sort of think of career fairs as you just kind of go and throw your resume to everyone. That's not really what the point of a, a career fair is. It's more about sort of building relationships with people and having conversations. So you probably will only end up giving your resume to maybe five organizations. I would say maybe bring five to ten copies of your resume. I don't think that you'll necessarily give all of those out, but at least you're prepared. But certainly you don't need to bring 60 resumes. And you can actually put your resume up on the Shack uh, Simplicity site. So have a few and you'll just give it to, to organizations that you have sort of really good conversations with and who are actually taking resumes. A lot of organizations won't actually want to take a resume at that time. Uh, they'll say apply on our site or email it to me later, but you just always want to be prepared. Okay, so we've talked about what you're going to do uh, prior to Wednesday. You're going to go on, research the organizations, and really sort of figure out those target organizations. So when you arrive on Wednesday, you really have that game plan. You say, okay, these are the top five organizations that I want to talk to. Um, I'm assuming there will be a map of where mm -hmm. the organizations are located. So you'll get there and you'll sort of say, okay, um, I'm interested. These are my top five organizations, and then these are the, the five that I'm really interested in after those top five. So that you kind of have a game plan and you figure out um, the order that you want to talk to people. So that number one organization, you're going to look at that map, look at your little cheat sheet and figure out where they are and sort of refresh yourself about the specifics of the organization. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was just wondering, are you able, like, do you have a list of companies? Mm -hmm. Are we able to determine what jobs those companies are offering? So, if you know. Yeah, that's a good, I'm, I'm not sure if on your site, does it, when they sign up for the career, does it show what types of jobs they're hiring for? They put up a job description and they put up, you know, that they are attending career fair. They have like a package that they can choose from, but I don't think they say exactly what jobs are available so there. Do you know if it's like, like an management job versus a I mean, right. You can look on their website though, because their websites, for example, related isn't coming, but they created a list because they have several jobs available that they want to fill with Shaq. So you can see, like, you know, who's hiring, basically, if that's what. Yeah, so what, what I would recommend doing is sort of, as you look through that list of different companies, I'm not entirely sure what all the information you'll see on that actual list, but then if you go onto the company website and look at their jobs and see what jobs they're hiring for, also look on NYU CareerNet and see if they're if they posted any jobs on there, and then also look on the shack, on the shack job. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're really sort of cross-referencing and doing your research. Um, if they are sort of actively hiring for a position, it will be posted in one of these places. So definitely make sure that you look there. Yeah. Are there going to be? I guess it's more for you. I guess, are there going to be any light entries? Are there going to suddenly there be a few Wednesday morning that aren't on the list today, or is that is it closed? Oh no, I'm, I'm doing a big push today. I'm hoping to get, hopefully, five more. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, so definitely make sure that you check right up, you know, until Tuesday night and sort of see who's going to be there. Right. Exactly, that's, that's a really good point. 
Any other questions about what you should do before the career fair? Okay, so, uh, so yeah. So if you say the, um, the company secretary just asked you to submit the resume online, so at the point that you were contacting this person, what's your name go? Is it just to get his or her car? Right, I'm going to talk about that. I'm definitely going to talk about, so what's the main goal of the career fair? Let me just, yes. What do you recommend if you go to the website and there's no job posting? What do you do that? Do you still approach the employer? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, I think one of the best things about a career fair is making contact with people within the organization. So a lot of a career fair is really sort of starting to make this relationship with people in the industry throughout um, different organizations. And some, Companies will actually be there and they aren't necessarily actively hiring at that moment, um, but they want to come to the career fair to make connections with students. Um, and if they have a position that opens up a month from now, they already have sort of this pool of people. So I would say still absolutely go up and talk to them, find out what types of um, opportunities are available within the organization, and then you sort of have someone to start with and um, you can certainly follow up and you'll be able to sort of uh, have that springboard. Oh, actually, and um, what we've asked the companies to do is to bring job opportunities that have been available, like descriptions of jobs that were available this last, this past year, and also to bring, if they do have jobs actually available, to bring just descriptions of it. And cool. So they'll have that. That's so by sort of interacting with different employers and getting this information, you are more prepared as you sort of move through your time here at SHAP at NYU and sort of look through your job search, you are very familiar with the types of opportunities that are available. Okay, so we're really prepared. We know what companies are here. Um, I have my top five companies that I want to talk to. Now, what do you do when you actually walk up to the table? Now, this is the part I think that people get really tricked up on. Um, you always want to try to make a good first impression. Now, how do you make a good first impression? So, as we saw in the video, a lot of times organizations will come, they'll have a lot of materials, they'll have a lot of giveaways. That's great. Um, that's for after you talk with the person. So, you want to make sure that when you walk up to the table, your first, your ultimate goal is not just to get that material. So that means you don't walk up and just sort of look around, take all the material, what do you guys do? And the person who's standing at the table is looking at the top of your head. That may leave an impression, but it's not going to be a good one. So remember that when you were at this career fair, all of the material, all of the giveaways, that is secondary. The first thing that you want to think about is starting to build relationships with people. So that means that you step up to the table, you give a nice firm handshake, you smile, maybe thank them for coming today. Um, and then, because you've done your research, you can start right off, you know, oh, I saw that you guys were gonna be here today, I was really excited. I noticed that you've been working on some project that really interests you, or something that you noticed from their website that was that sort of particularly caught your eye or a particular type of position that you know they're hiring for. So sort of show that you have done that legwork and that something about this organization really interests you. Ask them a question, and then this is going to sort of spin into more of a conversation. Um, make sure that you smile. Um, you know, and, and I don't mean to be fake. I still want you to be you, absolutely. But show that you're excited. You know, you all are in this program voluntarily, so make sure that you show them that you're excited. You chose to go into this profession because you're somebody who's truly enthusiastic about um, the field. So that's what you want to think about. Can yeah. I also throw something else in there? Sure. Um, if if you're interested in, let's say, Vernado, and you know. Michael Facitelli spoke at the Capital Markets Conference, and you remember something that he said, that you can go up to them and say, oh, I heard Michael Facitelli actually say da 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 you know, and that really interested me. And so always try and relate something to a panel if, you know, you haven't found anything that's, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Any kind of 
personal connection that you have to the organization, make sure that you try to really sort of connect those dots. Um, anything that, you know, if you've met the, the actual person before, try to sort of um, trigger their memory of when you met them. Make sure that you are just sort of um, engaging in conversation. Uh, how many of you have heard of your elevator pitch? No. Never heard of that term before. Okay, so an elevator pitch is basically the idea is that if you step into an elevator, you have about 30 seconds, you step into an elevator with someone you don't know, you have about 30 seconds to sort of introduce yourself and um, sort of start that relationship with them. So generally what that means is that you are going to sort of talk about maybe what you're studying, what you're interested in, and why that's important for this person that you're talking to. So it doesn't mean stepping up and saying, hi, I see that you work at um, NYU, I need a job there, can you give me a job? It's introducing yourself, saying, you know, I'm studying real estate finance, um, I was working uh, on Wall Street for so many years, but now I'm really looking to make the transition into real estate because blah, 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 blah. I'm really sort of trying to make those connections and sparking some sort of connection with the person you're talking to. So at a career fair, it's sort of a similar concept. You step up and you want to sort of have that very short introduction prepared. So before you come to the career fair, make sure that you're sort of thinking about, okay, so what am I studying? What am I interested in doing? And make sure that you can really sort of think about why are these companies interesting to you? What are you going to bring to them? Um, and why did you, you know, I would think about why did you decide to do this degree? What were you doing before? And try to really make those connections um, for why you think you're, gonna, you're somebody who's going to be successful in this field. Okay, so I know that this all seems sort of very broad. You said, well, okay, I, you know, you told me to introduce myself, but what, what can I really ask? So here's just sort of some examples of some of the questions that you may want to ask. Um, you know, if you see that they're hiring for a particular internship or part-time job or full-time job or whatever, you can certainly ask about what generally the qualifications they're looking for, what general types of experiences they're looking for. Um, you can always ask for what types of internships are available within the organization or different opportunities if you don't see them posted or you don't know for sure. Um, you can always ask about training, you can ask about mentor programs. Um, and then I always think that if you can sort of turn the conversation around to the person who you're actually talking to, people generally like to talk about themselves. So if you can sort of tap into that human nature, you're going to be in good shape. So, um, you know, always, of course, keep it professional, but certainly ask them. How did they get into this field? What do they enjoy working most about the organization? Something that sort of lets the person talk to you a little bit rather than you just saying, this is what I can do. So turning it into sort of more of a conversation. Um, and then of course asking if you can follow up with them. Um, and by following up, I would say um, somebody who you feel like you really did have a good conversation with, you feel like this is a place that you're really interested in working, uh, working at, ask them if you can have a business card. Um, now, again, this doesn't mean running around the whole room and taking a business card from every single person there, but really getting a business card from the people who you feel like you sort of made a connection with and had a real conversation with. And then when you get home, you can send them a thank you note. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what you can do after. So, um, and of course, like I said, you want to show your enthusiasm. So I know it may be the middle of a long week, you may be tired, you may be running from class, you may be running to class, work, you're all tired. When you step into that career fair, all of those other things have to go away. And we have to show them that you are focused, you're excited that they actually came down to be a part of this career fair. Um, you know, it's pretty impressive to get 60 organizations around New York to come and stand in a room for three hours. Uh, they're all very busy people. 
So definitely make sure that you are appreciative that they've come to spend time at NYU and you're excited that they're there and you're excited about the different opportunities that they present. Um, so definitely you'll want to ask for a business card. Definitely take any available brochures, literature. However, like I said before, this is secondary to actually making the connection with the actual person and talking to them. So you'll want to step up to the table, have your conversation, introduce yourself, ask any questions, get the business card, and then you can say, oh, you guys have some material, is it okay if I take some of this? And then you take the material with you. And this is a really great way that you can actually go home and sort of refresh yourself about what you talked about with the person at the fair. Okay, so what are we gonna wear to the fair? And this I always think I should, actually should have talked about what you should do before at the fair, because other than doing your research and printing out your resume, you also need to pick out your outfit. Um, so I would say most of you, if you have a suit, put your suit on. That's the easiest way. Um, if you don't have a suit or you really, really don't want to wear a suit, then it's just casual, it's fine. Um, but definitely no jeans, no t-shirts, no sweatshirts. Um, we at least want a nice pair of slacks, a nice button-down shirt. I would at least put a tie on. Um, you want to look like somebody who, when you step up to that table, somebody who's ready to go to work and will really be an asset to the organization. So if you come and it looks like you just rolled out of bed and maybe you came from the gym, they're probably not going to take you as seriously. So definitely, I'm sure you all have a suit, maybe you don't have a lot of opportunities to wear it, so put it on, it's a fun excuse to get dressed up. Um, and then, so like I said before, all these people are going to be in, the organizations are going to be in a room. You may spend some time sort of figuring out where you want to go next. You may spend some time waiting in line. Make sure that you are still, um, you, you still keep in mind that this is a professional setting. So be careful what it is you're saying to people. Um, even if you're sort of standing over here and the table's over there, they can still hear what you're saying. So make sure that you are being professional, um, you may have a really great conversation, but then you step over here and talk to your friend and say, oh, that guy, I don't know. They're going to hear it. <coughs> so just keep in mind that the whole time you're there, you're on stage, you're being professional. Um, I would say don't rule out employers just because of maybe things that you've heard or something that you've seen. There are a lot of opportunities within different organizations, and there are a lot of different roles within different organizations. So I would say definitely keep an open mind, talk to people, um, and if there's ever anything that you're maybe unsure of, this is a really great opportunity to actually step up to the table and ask them. And then don't end underestimate yourself. So you're all in school, you've all had really great experiences, different backgrounds, so make sure that you are really highlighting the different things that you've done and how that can relate to this specific organization. So a lot of times, and especially I meet a lot of SHAC students who are sort of making this career transition and they say, oh, I'm trying to get into real estate finance, but I really don't have experience there. I'm not quite sure how I can do that. Think about all the things that you have done that have really prepared you with the transferable skills to be successful in the industry that you're going into. So make sure that you don't go in there with, well, you know, I'm looking for this type of job, but I really, I don't have the experience, I'm not going to be successful there. If you go in with that attitude, you absolutely will not be successful. So make sure that you are really thinking about all of the things that you've done that you feel prepared to now go over into whatever uh, industry it is that you're trying to get into. So, and this is certainly something that if you want to come into Wasserman and talk with someone, we can help kind of pull out those transferable skills and point them out to you. Okay, so we've gone through the fair, we've talked to all these great people, we've had, you know, our top five great conversations, and then you walk away with, I'm hoping, some business cards, some literature. Make sure that you follow up with the people who you've had strong conversations with. So you could meet with someone, feel really great, they said send me your resume, 
and then you walk away and you don't do anything, that conversation that you had at the career fair is totally wasted. So take the stuff, go home, sit down, and write a nice thought out email to each of these people. Yes? I, I'm sorry, I think that's terrible advice to send them an email. Get a card, send them a handwritten note, you want to put some text in, type it out. It doesn't cost that much money. Well, that's my opinion. That I, I think handwritten notes certainly can be effective in certain circumstances. I think now email is actually becoming more um, all right. The other thing to think about is a handwritten note can take a day or two, whereas an email actually can get there before the handwritten note does. If you are somebody who likes to write handwritten notes, absolutely go for it. Um, in this case, generally I think email is okay. Um, you may want to call them as well. Um, <coughs> in, yeah, I've heard in the past uh, an email and a car. Is that a little bit redundant now to send a, in, in more of a fast based business? I personally think from this this type of interaction, so this is generally your initial meeting with someone. You don't want to be over him. Um, potentially after you've already even after you've already interviewed with someone, maybe a second interview, you may want to send a card. Um, but remember, this is just how we're sort of starting to sort of build the relationship. So we don't we don't really know them yet. We just had this first initial contact. The point of the email is to sort of elevate the relationship a little bit to help it grow a little bit, sort of remind them again who you are, and then you can sort of start having more contact. Um, so handwritten notes, a lot of that also sort of depends on the industry that you're in. I, I think after a career fair, an email is, is sufficient. Um, when you send this email, make sure. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It also depends on the person. So if it's a campus recruiter and they're on the road, email is the best. But if it's more of a managing director and they're just here to get to the talent, then maybe a thank you note is more appropriate. So it's that kind of Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in the email or the handwritten note, make sure that you include something that's maybe specific to what it is that you talked about. So you don't want to just say, thanks for coming, see you soon. But you know, if you said, oh, I really enjoyed our conversation about that conference that we both attended, or whatever it is, just something to sort of spark their interest, or spark their memory of the conversation that they had with you, that's going to be effective. If they say, oh, you know, that's really great, send me your resume, go home and make sure that you, you know, thank them for for speaking with you, and you attach your resume to it. Yeah. Um, how long should we wait until we send an email? Should we do that night or wait until next night? Within 48 hours. 48 hours. Yeah. So 24 to 48 hours. I would say um, that night is great, but but make sure that you go home or go to school and actually sit down at the computer and think about what it is that you're sending them. Um, you don't ever want to be walking out of the fair and writing a you know on your BlackBerry iPhone Droid. So make sure that you sit down, you know, let the conversation marinate a little bit, and then send the thank you note. Any other questions? Going back to the resume real quick. Yeah. You mentioned the walk-in hours today. I might have missed if you mentioned walk-in hours tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, um, 12.30 to 2. And you can always check the Wasserman website for the most up-to-date walk-in hours. <coughs> um, okay, so just sort of to recap what, what we talked about. So before, between now and Wednesday, you're going to log into the Shack Simplicity site, look up who's there, identify your top companies, and really do some research, write down targeted questions, and write down things that particularly interest you about that organization. When you show up on Wednesday, you're going to be professionally dressed, you're going to have a smile on your face, you're going to be excited and enthusiastic to be there, and you're going to really try to start making connections with people, so having conversations. Um, it's not about just sort of picking up the material, it's really about having conversations and sort of springboarding 
relationships in different organizations. Um, give out your resume to people who you have uh, meaningful conversations with, people who ask for them, and then take business cards and really follow up with people. That's, I think, where a lot of people kind of fall short. You go and you have these conversations and then walk out and expect that they're going to contact you. So make sure that you are really following up, sending personalized notes to people. Um, you may want to connect with them on LinkedIn if you had a, a really good conversation and they may be mentioned, oh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, that certainly is appropriate. However, when you send the invitation to connect, make sure that you put a little line in there and say, it was really great meeting you at the Shack Career Fair. I look forward to keeping in touch or something like that. Um, and then follow up with any uh, resumes, cover letters that have been requested. You should also bring your business cards as well. Absolutely. If you have business cards, you can certainly bring those. Exactly. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, I, sometimes I kind of feel like you're speaking for organization. There's always a few there that, for lack of a better term, really there for PR purposes. They're really not hiring. And, mm -hmm. and like you can almost tell in the conversation, it just feels really, you know, like last year I was speaking with an organization and it's like they really had no interest in taking the resume. They kind of said, well, you know, you can just kind of keep track of our website. What's like a, just, you know, what's a strategy you can take? Yeah, so I think that that's, that's an instance <coughs> where really are about sort of starting to build a relationship with the person within the organization. So that's true. There may be some organizations there that are there for sort of PR purposes to get their name out, um, and they may not be hiring right then. But they will be hiring eventually. So it's a really good way to sort of start, um, start having a conversation with someone, maybe connect with them on LinkedIn, those types of people definitely send them an email after so that you sort of start having this relationship, follow the company on LinkedIn, um, and then you know maybe a month, two months down the road, they actually do have a position available and you have somebody who you sort of have uh, a connection with already within the organization. Yeah? If you have a situation like you just mentioned, it's not really, it's just an individual from the company, but not somebody towards hiring or involved in that, can you, you know, say, can I get the information for uh, an HR contact that would be appropriate for you know, a Shaq student to follow up with and get that contact and then just reach out to them? Or is that too forward after a meeting like this? Um, no, I think that that's, that's probably okay if you have a good conversation with them. Um, generally, so you mean if someone is there is not actually from HR, they're just representing the yeah. company? Yeah, absolutely. Or you can sometimes send that person an email possibly saying, um, Good meeting you. Yes. Who do I follow up with? Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for coming. I had such a great conversation. You really sparked my interest in this organization. Something like that. Um, who would I follow up with? And they may say, oh, you can keep talking to me. I'm happy to forward anything on. Um, or if you see something posted that's interesting, let me know. Um, often sort of having that connection with someone who's actually not in HR can be quite helpful. Yeah. Um, oftentimes you kind of send your little thank you response and don't get a response from that, which is totally fine, but mm -hmm. is it considered, is it kind of going overboard if maybe two or three weeks later you say, I just wanted to tell you that I started work with this semester internship, but I'm still very interested in the company. Well, is that considered? No, I think that's great. I'm saying when you don't get a response. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. Um, as long as you're not sort of sending them an email every single day and being really pushy and saying, you know, give me a job, that's fine. Make sure that the emails still have sort of a, a professional tone to them, a casual, you know, you're not being uh, overly pushy. I think that that's absolutely fine. Yeah, thank you for making it big, um, big mm -hmm. Do they have to agree to make you uh, uh, to contact me on LinkedIn before you actually send the advice? Or can you just simply send the advice? So what so when you connect with someone on LinkedIn it will actually send them an invitation and say, hey, Rebecca Salt would like to connect with you and then they have to accept it. So that's why you want to give that little um, the little note that goes along with it. So I may get this thing and say, Rebecca Salt, who, who is that? And 
I read the notebook. Oh, I met her at the shack for her. Okay, that's great. So practically anyone you speak to in a career fair who is at the table, you possibly can connect them to. I wouldn't, I wouldn't connect with everyone there. I would really only connect with people who you've had a conversation with. So that, you know, when they get this money, I really don't remember this. So you want to make sure that it's someone who you actually had a conversation with. Um, following up on this earlier question, is it a good idea to say, you know, to see something in the news, you see a news item that might have something to do with the company and say, hey, I thought you might be or the industry in general and say, hey, I thought you might be interested in this. Yep, industry. absolutely. Anytime you can follow up with something, you know, if you had a conversation about something and maybe you both didn't know the answer to it, if you can follow up, you know, I saw this news article of what we were talking about, absolutely. I think that's a great strategy. Also, just as an FYI, um, a lot of the people who are coming, um, some of the, they're alumni of the program. So they're going to have a ribbon on their name tag that says alumni. So that way you can say, oh, hi, you know, you did the program. When did you graduate? Sort of. Yes, that's fantastic. I mean, I think any time, you know, that you're sort of working to make these connections with people, outside of the career for anywhere, just it's all about sort of networking and building relationships with Anytime you can find that commonality, that's the best place to start. Um, you know, if, and even right now, the Giants, you can say, oh, you're a Giants fan. Talk about that. Something that sort of connects you guys, and that's going to act as a springboard for sort of more in-depth conversation. So certainly, if you see that somebody did the program, ask them what their favorite class was. If they have advice about what, you know, professors to take. Anything about that, that's going to be really helpful. Any other questions? Okay, well, again, my name is Rebecca. You can find me up at the Wasserman Center. Um, thank you all for coming. I know it was early on a Monday morning. Um, good luck at the career fair.